evening. First weekend in April. Uh, right here on Friday night, I put some bait in on um, until you get to come. Make sure you get to. Um, and I moved on to Su Sugaco, Lake Suga, where I pre baited midweek. Um, it's pretty tight, so I wasn't going to get the rods out, so I was just going to sleep and get the rods out in the morning, but I, I, I did. Um, had a bite this morning, corn carp, 25, 24 pounds, something like that, um, 90 centimetres. A krill, 20, 20 or 15 mil, pop up snowman. As you see, it's about, as you see, it's about 6 o'clock now on a Saturday night. Um, it's been, been colder, than, colder, than as, colder than normal recently. Today's just been about 7 or 8 degrees in a day. Light breeze, but the wind's stopped now. Um, what I'm saying is it's flat calm. I've had a couple of bleeps. I think it was ducks. Ducks picking a bait up. Um, but the rods are out, four rods out. We're ready to go for, for overnight. Let me just take a... Give a bit of a view of Lake Sugako. Well, there's JCB here today, which has been great. We've been digging up, digging up the ground here. Marvellous. Um, Making sure this brew's going alright. Yep. Right. So, put that end up there. Somewhere about there is the cut through to Mikata, Lake Mikata. You can still see some snow up on the mountains over there actually. It's still it's dark cold here. So, at that end of the lake, deep. Certainly, 25 foot or 30 yards. Dirty silt, if you put your lead in there, it comes back stinking. <laughs> comes around there, so that's why I did summer holidays last year. Um, had a week on there after pre baiting. Not, not so much, actually, not, not great, actually. Caught a few, but not loads. <laughs> um, comes around here, there's a famous typhoon peg that Chris and I got absolutely blown off the bank one day um, it's just about there it comes around and from about that point there you get a start of shallow so this side of the lake, this, this area here certainly this whole this this all this area is shallow it's about 12 feet and um, the bottom sound no issues with the silt um, so right off, the, off, the, off this point here so the lake comes around here I go around and take a Maybe take a panoramic view from over there later. <laughs> Around there, you can see the bottom, it's all about 10 yards out, really shallow, two foot deep maybe. Down here, really lovely, sandy, smooth bottom. No snags, no gravel, it doesn't smell. Perfect, you don't, no worries about putting your bait on this. <laughs> um, my rods are just over the, over the top there, if I can get this camera up high enough. You see the tips. Right, through this way the lake goes right round, it goes right around the back over there, comes round onto the point. That there is the is the gap into Lake Su Sugetsu. So basically that 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 bank over there is Lake Sugetsu. Um so it's all the same water. It should be all the same fish, but I think the fish in here are a bit smaller. And you can just see there the bird hut. That's a that's a landmark on this bank. Basically only about three pegs on this lake. Bird hut's one. This car park. It used to be under that big pile of dirt. I don't know what's gonna be not gonna do with this in the future. Is another. And um that peg up there with on the cut through is is the third. All that bank on the far side there, the island, that is basically an island. Um you can drive round. There's certainly a road to there if you go right around the other side, but it's a long, long way round. Um, there's no access really. I think I don't know. I think you could probably get getting over there. But you have to get onto the island. You've got down narrow tracks. It's a bit of a nightmare.
I'm going to measure boards out from where I measured, caught that fish. Perfect conditions now. Absolutely flat calm. <laughs> I saw a carp jump earlier, a small one, tying off that point. Um, yeah, probably five pounder. But it's a good sign nonetheless. So on these rods, left hand rod, a KD rig with, with two tiger nuts on it. I've done well on this complex of tiger nuts. It's normally either been big fish or small fish though. So that's got a tiger nut with a bag mix. Dynamite beats. Tiger up bag mix. They're all on about the 25 meter line. Second rod is on a 20 mil single krill baits, glugged up in, in body glug. Um, two right hand rods, basically off this this point, which is about there. So the fishing basically on the point on the just by the point of that mountain comes the hill comes down there. So. Just around that area, just got two rods out there. That's where I caught the fish from. Um, on the snowman. All the rods are on, all the rods are fishing on inline drop offs. Um, music this morning, really, really impressed when that, how it came off. That fish, when I picked it up, was up in the water, you know, out, out there, out of harm's way. It was just a case of leading it back into the bank. Seen quite a lot of fish jumping today off that point. There's a stream comes in, which I'm going to have to show you now. And that's actually the famous mark on this peg. Um, unfortunately, with that digger being where it is, I couldn't drive, and they're doing this work here. I couldn't drive where I wanted to drive, which was over the top of there. So down in over there, which is the old car park. Duck's diving here today, I don't quite know why. I was tempted to put a chodi on top of it, but uh, I didn't. So, I think you can see if the light's still good. Stab the hair in there. We'll jump over this stream. A bit of water flowing in there. I can't see any fish. So I took these I took that initial video from but where the car is uh, behind the digger. You can see this point I talked about, shallow water, I guess you can see the bottom there, a couple of foot deep all the way out. This is that bay you couldn't see from over that position. The typhoon peg is basically straight ahead of us. Left hand side, it's shallow in this bay as well. Um, I think all this would be, be fishable. Actually, it's quite a nice uh, spot in, in there on the left. So that might be a fourth peg. I missed out that one out. Um, but normally, people fish off this, so you can't. It just cuts that peg off in the corner. Coming back this way. I thought I saw a big fish in the water. Then it's an eel pot. Oof. Got my heart going. You can see around into that bay there, so from the point, that's what you couldn't see before. It goes right around the back there, it's very shallow. And having seen this peg here and, and, and recognising that it's, the bottom's very clean, I suspect the bottom's clean down there as well, so that could give some more options in the summer. I came down on Wednesday night, 
So I was working in Kobe. I took a hire car from Kobe up here, it's about two and a half hours. I saw a great big wild pig just over there. We don't see that tonight. When I um so last week when I left I left some bait under a boat up here so I didn't have to take the bait to work. Left a throwing stick and a catapult and enough bait to pre-bait this peg and pre-bait and put boilies into what's gonna be my golden wheat peg. Fortunately it was still there when I got there on Wednesday. I was a bit nervous about it not being, so I did take some extra bullets to work with me just in case. But it turned out it was everything was alright, so I've still got those, still got all the boilies. It really did make a difference because it meant I got a bite straight away this, this morning. Um, I'm sure if I hadn't put that bait in Wednesday, it'd have been hopeless. So and I think I think it's a really big deal pre-baiting a peg and not fishing it. Chris is actually fishing his peg that he's pre-baiting for Golden Week. Um, or he's fishing just off it. Um, I think it needs. I think it needs to be a real rest. I also think past experience has shown if you're pre-baiting, you've got to pre-bait midweek. So Friday night, Sunday night, you know, start your weekend session, and then Wednesday. I just don't think it works. It's just, it's a weak gap between between the feeding. I had a drive around earlier, I saw Tamora Sam, who's a, one of the local guys. Um, he, he gave me the first introduction to this lake, he showed me where the pegs were, um, gave me some background, showed me some of his photos. So he's fishing, just with a guy from NG, I think it's from NG Carves, I've quite, never met the guy before. He's fishing on, just on Mikata, on the other side of the, on the other side of the cut through. And there's also two guys, there's Endo San from Euro Carp. Another guy I don't know it is, a young guy in a white haze. He's fishing on Seto. He's this guy on Seto has been there two weeks now. I don't think he's caught a carp yet, I think he's had only uh, Herabuna. Endo San hasn't caught though. Apparently Endo San was on last week, I didn't see him. But apparently he was on last week and he's caught he had four last week and he's not caught this week. And to be honest, Chris and I haven't told him what we've caught. Chris had two bites last week on so you had to go, which is just unheard of at this time of year. Just get all the steps of these rods. Done. Let's see how you don't run into this tree in the dark. Look at the spikes on this. You see it? Oof. So I suspect everyone could be playing their cards close to their chest and not letting on because if you tell people they get in your spot it's just going to make more fishing more difficult. I didn't think Japan would be like this but um, actually needs must. It was interesting today, it was, a, it was interesting today, this is the boat where I left my stuff underneath. It's a 500 pound boat that, so I just left it there. I don't think there's a hole in it, I think I might take it home next time. Um, When I caught that fish this morning, so I caught it basically about there, 25 yards out. Um, on a krill snowman. Um, you know, when I caught that, I mean, it was it was about half an hour after the workmen turned up and started on that digger. So that digger woke me up. I thought, great, that's what wrote my day off. But they just turned it off. And took the truck away, or whatever they were doing, messing around at. Um, and I've got a bite. So you might say, why are you stood on the wall here, right over the water, making noise? To be honest, I just don't think these fish really mind that much. Obviously, I'm not going to go jumping around or splashing around too much, but and I think they see enough disturbance. Sunday the 6th of April, uh, 
and it's almost 10.30 in the morning. Um, got the ones out last night before it went dark. Got some dinner and all that. Um, it was a cold night. I think it got to about, it must be minus. Minus whatever, minus two in the, in the middle of the night. Lots of rain, lots of hailstones, a bit of snow. <laughs> um, very unpleasant. Not a great morning. The, the second rod it was on a single 20 mil bottom bait. <laughs> Started bleeping. Just about every 10 minutes, it bleep. Bleep. It got to a point where we're out, I went and took a look. You know, Bobbin's where it was, everything looks normal. Back to the car. Bleep. Bleep. Took another look. Fine, I'm thinking I'm thinking maybe there's a hair moon sat on the end of it. Car doesn't move the lead very far. Just stranded like a sheep, stuck on a barbed wire fence. About it. I don't know, quarter to eight maybe. Starts to get a bit more energetic, more beep. 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 So I went out to take a good look. Bob is where it is. Bob is where it was. But the line's up. Picked up onto this fish. It's kited far to the right. Don't know where it got to. Um, but I was taking line. It was dragging through something. I was taking line. And it stopped. Moved, changed the angle. Moved down the bank. Pinged off whatever it was stuck on. Took some more line, it's grating, and then it stopped. And I, then I could drag whatever it was stuck on, I could drag it, and it felt like I was dragging it up the, up the slope because if I changed the angle, it moved a little bit, and it stopped moving. I could feel the fish kicking on the end. The rods bent right over, and basically dragging sort of dead weight up the shelf, but I can still feel the carp pulling, pulling. And I've left it to go slack for a while. 15 minutes still down the rain. Picked it up, dead weight. I'm trying to move this dead weight, moving it, line broke right in the middle. You know, we've got probably 20 foot, 20 foot line back. It's probably 30 yards out. Um, got it. So I brought the rod back to the car, just left it up the side of the car. Thought, well, I'm just going to leave it there, we'll, we'll put it back out again. Quarter past eight, no, probably a bit longer than that, maybe half eight. Um, tiger nut rod. Let out a little beep, beep, beep. And I thought about getting it done twice here, so I went down and took a look. Massive drop back. So put about three turns on the reel, still not, still not got tight. Picked it up, no no weight on it. I think, oh you know, no, I thought I'd been done. Thought the uh, lead had just discharged and fish had done me. But come back with nothing. No leader, no leg core, no rig. Cut off on something. Unbelievable. So, got both rods out, and that's why I'm sat in the car now because it was chucking it down. And um, I'm drenched. And with it being about five degrees outside, I need to get warm again. So I've just got the engine on. Gutted is not the word. Got four rods out, we'll leave them out all day now. Probably bring them about four or five o'clock. Gonna go maybe a bit later we get start with a pre bait that peg on the other side. Basically that's at least three bites. But well, I didn't expect to get one. This is a good result, so the feed's working on the boilies, but that's two two one to the fish. Just had a 65 centimetre carp, 2.30 in the afternoon, last day, Sunday. Um, it's one of the rods to recast about, you know, I forgot what it was this morning. Single 20mm krill bottom bait, and a blowback. Uh, I mean, that went through a snag or something as well, I had to change angles a few times. I'm just I'm wondering now whether there is a rope or something running across the front of this peg. Um, it's not. A f you're gonna get that on this lake. There's been a number of oyster pots or crab pots or something. I haven't picked this up with the feeder so far. With a, with a marker, 
You don't really want a marker again, but I hadn't picked it up the marker. Um, and you know, it felt about the same distance out as that one that I lost this morning. And to be honest, as soon as I picked up, this fish was onto it. Um, you know, I can understand why now when I picked up that rod this morning and nothing came back at all. That it might well have just cut off on a mussel or a shell that's on that. Uh, we'll just persevere. I think it's definitely the right idea to take the back leads off. Back leads off. Drop leads. Try and keep the fish up in the water. Tight lines to the leads so they don't get a chance. To, doesn't get a chance to drop into. Um, don't get a chance to drop into the snag. So for free cast, two thirty. Um, and the bite happened right at the end of a really, really torrential hailstorm. Um, I thought I got the first couple of bleeps. I thought were. Um, yeah, probably the wind, the landing net blowing on top of the rods. You know, just thought it was that kind of thing. Yeah, the storm stopped. Had another bleep, and I took a look, and it went off. Um, it fired very hard, but it spirited about 65 centimetre, probably about 10 pound. It's getting towards the end of the uh, end of this session now. I'm, um, I'm starting to think about getting the bait ready for pre-baiting here before I leave, and then. And then pre-baiting on on the opposite lake, on the opposite bank, on the other lake. Um, I did plan to come back on Wednesday to fish, but probably Tuesday night to fish, and then Wednesday to come back. Um, this car, the sub battery's gone flat again. I won't charge up, so I need to take it to the garage on. Um, on, on Wednesday, so I think I'll I put boilers in here, but not fish on Wednesday. So I'll put, probably put a couple of kilos in. Look what I've got there, yeah, probably. Probably a couple of kilos. Maybe half, maybe, yeah. Um, and then I'll go into the bank and put in the normal bait. Put the rest of that bucket and a couple of kilos over there as well. Maybe three. <laughs> Plan is then come back Wednesday. Baiting. So just put the uh, put some more boards in this for the weekend. And put some just normal bait on the other banks, so the, the particle and the boilies. And then Come back the following Friday night. If I don't, unless I get another bite, I think it's my last post today. Right. Friday, 11th of April, about 5.30. Um, got into work early this morning, so I've left a bit early. I actually got on the bank. Um, I wanted to get here when it, before it was dark, so I get my pod set up nice. Get some bait in, and I'm going to... Um, you do that kind of stuff in a, where it's nice and sociable rather than in the dark when there's all sorts of stuff I can't see or can't do properly. I didn't take any footage last week because I dropped my camera in. <laughs> I ended up the tripod and I knocked it off with a bucket. Stupid thing to do. So um, um, I haven't got to get any footage last week apart from the feeding. I don't think I'm going to get any today because of, uh, because of the light. But been significant development in what they've been doing the building here. I did take some footage last week of this concrete. This boat wasn't here last week. I'm gonna guess those poles go right into the water. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. And that's the peg. That's the boat. Now I put bait in, basically when that pipe is there last week. So I reckon. I reckon if I put bait up the side of it now that could be quite a nice feature. I'm going, to go, I'm going to go on this boat in a minute and put bait off the corner. Right, it's about 8 o'clock on Friday night. I've got this pig sorted out, got some bait in, that was been about 6. Rods are out, ready to go, got bags on. Just been round to the other side of the lake and put some bait in. Um, put about half a bucket of, half a bucket of particle in. A small bucket of boilies, probably about 3, three kilos. Um, and now I'm back on this peg, I'm going to put the rods out and suck my float rod out. I tangled the float rod when I was messing around with it before, so I didn't need to tackle that up again. Yeah. When I was putting a bait in over on Sugetico, Sugetico Lake, um, I disturbed at least one big carp in the margins. Um, it was in like 18 inches, 2 foot of water. Um, it was good and 
if I had the rods around there, I'd probably had them out. Um, but then probably could have I didn't because actually if I'd fished it, I wouldn't have fed it as I wanted to feed it. You know, I'd wrecked the whole plan up for the week after next. So um, good news is they're on it. I mean, you don't often see fish on there. Very, very, very rarely. Um, you know, scoot around the margins, and I could just see it. With my head torch on about two foot down, about ten meters out. It was a, it was a proper one. Um, Thirty pounder probably. Um, maybe I should get on. Should have gone there now. I don't know. I think this peg's due. He's going to do it with a big fish tonight, so I'm not too worried. Um, all right, probably dinner. Convenience store, spaghetti bolognese. It's time to uh, get the rods out, get bed, go to bed early. Maybe I'll wait. Maybe I'll film it again in the night if I get one. Just take a look at that rod. That I seen before. Um, and an easier snag leader. Two and a half, three foot leg core. An inline drop off, so it's a task one. I had to cut the tail rubber down because when I bought them, the tail rubber was soft, I didn't realise over the net. Um, a little anti tangle tube, about 10 inches of PV, I think it's jelly wire, but the best braid I've used. Size 6 long shank with a blowback ring, a little line of line on it, I put a piece of foam over the top of that. So, man, I've got all these three rods ready, and I'm going to wear. Uh, Put them all out at once. The only thing I've got different here is this one. My tiger nut rig. Inline drop off again. I just ordered some new fox rings actually, which would make this a bit easier. And if you can see that, that's a size 8, size 6 gardener mugger, soft salt urn braid, um, tied KD style, double tiger nut. I'm going to put that in a PVA bag with. Some um, sticky eyes. Um, it's a bad mix.
Sort of robbed it, shaking a little bit there. Tap in. One thing for the alarm, I sort of like picking up just hit it. No big, big fish there. This boat came in. I said so yesterday, didn't I? Ten pound, the five pound. Fucking hell, carp. That's a baby one. Got the red back as well. Happy days. Right, we'll, the, we'll hook him up. We'll get that out. Camera somewhere different. No, 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 no,
っきい田んぼですね。刺身にしとまいで。刺身。うん、刺身。もう、これは食べられないですよね。二月にうまかったで。え、こういうの刺身食べたら。二月。二月。二月にほら、あのー、料理のパックに、はいはいはい、こういうの刺身。そうですかうんこうこうって食べたらうまかったでコリコリして今でも食べれると思うんでちょっとちょっと今ここよ波あると白ぶを寄ってくんだけ白ぶってこんな透明の魚そうそうそうそうもろもろって食べたらうまかったで全部やねこのぐらい細かい網やと取れるかもわからんこれこれえこの細かい、うん、こんだけの目の細かいあの網やと白ぶきたらこれ取れるわあそうですかうん天ぷらの下のと耐えたのもろた近所の人にうんまあ多分あの寄ってくるわ見とるとカジヤルね波やないとあかんけど今度五十センチ六十センチじゃんけ六十センチ六十センチかな大きいの大きいじゃないでしょうね今日ミッドオーバーするタイムですおだいぶ引っ張ったやろこれそう結構強いでしょうねあすごいオタク上手に日本語喋んなるね学校<笑>の先生けえー、あのエンジニアです。要はあのブラジルの人も釣りに来とるわ。ああ、そうですよね。もう案外ブラジルの人もたくさんおるんで。多いんでしょうね。この辺うん、わあ、すごいな。ありがとうございました。わあ、すごい。